Welcome to the FCA Leadership Forum Five Question Series. I'm Bob Ackerman, the editor in chief of Signal Magazine and Signal Connections. Our guest today is Alfred Grasso, president and chief executive officer of the MITRE Corporation. Mr. Grasso has held several leadership and management positions within MITRE since joining the company in 1986. He served as director of the CQ Dye Federally Funded Research and Development Center, operated by MITRE for the Defense Department as Senior Vice President and General Manager of MITRE's Washington C-Cube Center and as Vice President and Chief Information Officer. He was appointed MITRE's President and CEO in 2006. In January of 2010, he was appointed to the Defense Science Board and in May, he was named Vice Chair of FCA's Board of Directors. Mr. Grasso, welcome to FCA. Thank you for joining us. Well, Bob, thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, I've been a member of FCA now for many years, and I've been uh, very proud and privileged to serve on FCA's board now for uh, well over a half dozen years. And, and recently being elected as the vice chair, I hope to serve FCA as well as FCA has served me and uh, my colleagues. Well, thank you for the kind comments. We value leadership such as yours. In that vein, I was wondering, what would you say are the characteristics in an individual that really marked that person as a potential leader? Well, I've met a lot of individuals that have had a variety of characteristics, that, and each one of them has demonstrated leadership in their own right. There are two characteristics, in my opinion, for which the most successful leaders, uh, I think, have exhibited these characteristics uh, dominantly. They are humility and courage. Those two characteristics put together really have propelled these leaders to gather a following in such a way where that following feels like they own not only the problem but the solution set and they're willing to climb the highest mountain to achieve that because of the courage that that leader has demonstrated. Interesting, but what would you say is the most important skill in a leader? Well. A leader has to demonstrate a clear understanding of the domain space that he or she operates in and needs to have a vision for what that goal line is. It's very hard to follow someone if that person doesn't know where he or she is going. So having that vision, having that understanding of the domain space is very, very important. And then possessing the, the courage to be able to pursue that is equally important. When do you know your leadership style is working? What are the indicators? Well, the first thing I do is I look behind myself, and if there's no one there, I think I have a problem. Uh, what's most important is really how the folks react to you. There's many stakeholders involved in leadership positions. There are those for whom you hope to influence directly so that they indeed follow a track that you're on. But then there's all of those other folks that are impacted by your actions and the actions of the team that you're leading. So what you're really looking to see how they're reacting and responding to every action that you take to ensure that it's a constructive action towards that end goal. Earlier you cited humility and courage as key qualities. Let's look at the aspect of humility. Throughout your history, what would you say was your greatest failure and what did you learn from that? Well, I, I have a number of failures behind my belt. Uh, my greatest personal failure, quite frankly, has not been able to, was not being able to balance work and personal life. Uh, I share with you that uh, I have three wonderful children, all girls, and uh, I was consumed, quite frankly, with a very important uh, task at work, which prevented me from being present when my third daughter was born. And to this day, that has been something that I felt was a failure on my part, uh, and I regret to this day. I don't even remember how important the thing I was working on was. I don't even remember what it was at this point in time, but I do remember not being there. On the business side of things, the failure was really not looking at all of the stakeholders that were involved in the decisions that were being made. Uh, when I was at MITRE about 10 years ago, I was the CIO of the organization. We were implementing a business tool. 
got a lot of very good advice in the implementation of the business tool. And from a back office perspective, it looked very good. From a front office perspective, it really did not present the value that it could have or should have presented to the, all the people that were using it. The tool was implemented, but it failed. We lost probably about $600,000 of investment in that tool, and I think it could have been done better. What I will tell you is about eight years later, in my current role, we saw almost exactly the same situation arise. But I learned from that mistake and, in fact, approached the problem completely differently, and it's now much more successful. What advice would you give someone to avoid making that same mistake? Listen. Listen to? Listen to all that surround you. They all have a voice. We talk about adaptability and agility in leadership, adaptability and agility in organizations. And what's critically important is adaptability and agility can only be achieved through feedback. If you have no feedback, you can't adapt. You can, but you're just doing it chaotically. Feedback's critically important. Leaders need to learn to listen, listen carefully, and respond to what they hear. Who are your heroes? I have a lot of heroes. Um, let me share with you at least three different types of heroes. One whom I'm sure you know very well, as I'm sure everybody in the audience knows, John F. Kennedy. Certainly a person who demonstrated humility and courage, the decisions that he made, the vision that he shared, the mission to the moon, clear demonstration of mission. The Cuban Missile Crisis, a clear demonstration of courage, and his entire life, a clear demonstration of humility. I would tell you he's truly a, a hero of mine. What I'd also tell you is, as I read the paper every day today, I continue to be more and more impressed with every soldier, sailor, and airman that is serving this country today. Every one of them is a hero to me. They serve in key positions, in some cases as mayors and governors of foreign states. In other cases, they're protecting the lives of folks that they just met a couple days ago. They're serving every one of us in, in this nation today. And I will tell you, they're doing this at a cost to them and to their families. Uh, and that, I, in my opinion, is, is true heroism. And lastly, I would say a hero to me is, is my father. My father came to me, uh, came to uh, this country from Italy, as he put it, with $10 in his pocket, no home, no family in this area, worked in factories all of his life, and had a mission. And that mission was that his children would do better than him. And there was no question that I was going to college whether I wanted to or whether I didn't, I was going to college. I grew up with one brother. Both of us went to college. My brother now serves as the uh, dean of graduate uh, education at University of Vermont, and I've made it to the CEO of the Mitre Corporation. And I would tell you is that that was as a result of my father's drive and insistence on being better than he was during his life. And what I would tell you is I am still far from where he was. Well, Mr. Grasso, thank you very much for sharing your insight and perspective on leadership. Thank you also for your support, and good luck on all your endeavors. Thank you very much.